I'd like to call the Delaware County Commissioner's meeting to order Monday, August 18, 2014. It's now 9.07. Would you please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I apologize for that. I came up to the <coughs> well, they had something about backup, and I wasn't sure. Those guys will learn it. Denise, can you do a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Bledsoe? Here. Ms. Regan? Right. Mr. King? Here. Ms. Rust? Present. And Ms. Sean Neal? Here. We have no public hearings. We need approval for the August 4th meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Denise, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Bledsoe, yes. Ms. Riggin, yes. and Mr. King. Yes. We have no presentations to the commissioners. We'll move on the contracts or agreements for approval. Uh, Judy, you going to do the tax management? Uh, yes. Uh, we've just completed a uh, three-year cycle of uh, looking at uh, people who had ineligible homesteads, and uh, the data that they used was three years prior. So uh, it was uh, time to look at it again. We did a test and it uh, looks like there'll be uh, substantial uh, things that we'll have to look at additionally. And uh, at the time uh, I was talking to them, I asked them if it would be possible to decrease the amount that they receive. And so this is an addendum and it's reducing it from 45% to 40%. <coughs> Nice work. Yeah, appreciate it. I'll move for approval of the uh, Tax Management Associates Corporation addendum. Second. I have a motion for approval and a second. Do we have any discussion? Denise, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Riggin? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Next, we have uh, MnDOT Local Public Agency <coughs> Projection Coordination Contract. Angie? Good morning. Um, Good morning. This contract is for Bridge 516. This is Tillotson Bridge over White River. This is between Delaware County and NDOT to cover federal funding for all phases of the project, which is 80%. We're glad to get this going. So yeah. I'll move for approval of the, uh, the LPA agreement as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Uh, what is the timeline for that to start? Um, I will be doing the advertisement on NDOT's website <coughs> to select a consultant. Once we select a consultant, then we'll enter into contract. At least this is kind of the slowest part of the process. It takes about four to five months to get NDOT to return the contract back. So this will speed things up so the money's in line so we can enter into contract and get started on design. And this is a complete teardown? No. No, just the rehab. Just the rehab. Similar to Tiltson Overpass. Okay. And this is the one in our edit project, one yes. of the three. Yes. Yes. And so that maybe summer of 15 or okay. year and a half to two years from now. Yeah. Thanks for your work. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Can you call the roll please? Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Riggin? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Next local public agency project coordination contract supplement number one. <coughs> Andy? <coughs> This is a supplemental. We currently have um, an existing contract with NDOT for Nebo Road at Jackson Street. At the time, NDOT was only entering into contracts per phase. Now they're wanting to put all the phases under one contract. <coughs> so this is just covering all the phases. I'll move for approval of the LPA uh, agreement as presented. Second. I have a motion to approve and second. Have any discussion? Then he's called the roll please. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Thank you. We love you do it for our contracts and agreements. We have no appointments, <coughs> no table business. No ordinances for second reading, so we'll move on to ordinances for first reading. First ordinance will be number 2014-014, Delaware County creating fund for the Delaware County prosecuting attorney for the deposit of funds derived from the federal equitable sharing program. Do we have anybody here from the prosecutor's office? 
what the commissioners like to do. So move. Ordinance. Yes. Have somebody will give a brief explanation yeah. with this being the first reading. You'll see if somebody can come over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. prosecutor's office to get down here we'll move on to ordinance number 2014-016 key five entry for delaware county justice center and delaware county building Angie. okay what this ordinance is is we're going to raise the price of the key fobs from ten dollars to twelve uh, for obvious reasons we've had to do that because the cost is costing us more and the sheriff has pulled the key fobs from the front door at the Justice Center there was 10 key fobs in a basket and where the runners or the attorneys could grab a key fob and go in and go to the back well they pulled those fobs so therefore the fobs are coming back to us and we've charged we're charging attorneys runners $12 to get a key fob and they they're doing that so they can have more uh, see who's going back there and who's not so that's really all this is yes we're just <clears throat> yep it's twelve dollars and then fifteen to replace and it was ten dollar twelve yes. for replacement cost so it goes by. so i'll move for introduction of ordinance 2014-016 second have a motion for introduction and a second discussion Denise, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Riggin? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Do you, are they issuing key fobs now, taking them in? Are they doing that immediately? Yes. Okay, right. so I'll move, make a motion for suspension of the rules for 2014-016. Second. I have a motion to suspend the rules with a second. Any discussion? Denise, call the roll, please. Mr. Bledsoe, or Ms. Riggin? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. I'll move for approval of ordinance 2014-016. Second. I have a motion for approval and a second. The next call the roll for it. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Riggin? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. How did you get in touch um, with anybody or? I finally had to call Jerry Cook and he's going to, because uh, nobody was answering any phones, so he's going to try and get somebody to come over here. I'm going to just move on down until okay. I get. 
Okay, no resolutions for approval. We'll go to department heads and elected officials. Mr. Craycraft. Morning, Steve. Good morning. Steve Craycraft, the Delaware County Clerk. Um, I've presented a list of some precinct changes that the election board is requesting for the commissioners to review. Um, several reasons why we've done this list that this first election in 2014 we we were probably a hundred poll workers short with about a week to go before the election actually couldn't find people to work and so um, election day we had about 25 poll workers not show up and that's the first time that's ever happened you usually have one call in sick or they've had an emergency or something but we actually had several in several precincts that did come that day um the reduction of the list if it goes by the list that we that the election board and um, has submitted would probably reduce about twenty thousand dollars each election so about forty thousand dollars a year just to reduce those staff we're we're looking at trying to reduce a hundred poll workers um the ones that are highlighted in pink, those are in the same building anyway. So we're asking that we were going to reduce those to one precinct board instead of two precinct boards because they're in the same area anyway. Right. The ones that are highlighted in yellow on your list are the actual precincts that we're asking to be moved to the precinct that is not highlighted. Um, like three it was at Northside Church and moving it to where precinct 34 is so we can have one board have those under one board uh, 26 was out at Pittenger Center which we were going to recommend to move that anyway because just because of the parking situation and things out there and moving that to where precinct 25 is um, but again we presented a list if the only one that um, the two precincts are together is precinct 53 and precinct 54 um, those were moved they used to be in the Mount Pleasant trustees office and they were moved to a church about a block away and the church has very been very kind to us but where the precincts are is like their classroom area and they have temporary walls set up and so it's quite a bit of work for them to take down those walls and get prepared for election day so what I did and um, Mr. State and we went out and met with the church that's on the same parking lot as the Mount Pleasant trustee office it's on the it's right behind that office and they have a large basement meeting area that's handicap accessible you can use that lot um, they have Wi-Fi they have everything that we need for a precinct and so we met with their board their board was in agreement if you agreed to move to for that precinct to be there so it's actually just right behind where the other one was already already at um, but again it's on your recommendations I know this is the first time you saw the list I brought it up and put it on your desk this morning if you would like to see the numbers I have another list that shows the combined numbers um, but our goal is to try to reduce a hundred poll workers if we can get to 75 you know that would be satisfactory even if the, some of these cannot be combined under one board um, but it's just, that's our goal and we we reduce monies out of our election budget this year I think we reduced it down to about thirty five thousand dollars less for 2014 but this would knock another 20 to 25 thousand out for this next election so it's something for the commissioners to consider and um, then I have another um, thing for you to consider also the food for election day there's not that many caterers in Delaware County anymore that will take on several precincts we rely a lot on Richards 12th Street Cafe used to a lot of these churches the ladies associations would actually cater the food for election day well that's not so anymore and so by the time food gets to the places it's either um, wrong or it's cold you know there's so many special dietary needs because our poll workers are getting older and there's a lot of dietary needs and so there's a lot of things to to take care of on election day so 
I polled all of the classes. We have three classes to get ready for election day. And it was an overwhelming majority that they rather receive the pay for the money and provide food for themselves than us cater food. Mm -hmm. But I believe the commissioners have to approve that for us to pay because you set the pay for the food. And so I believe you have to approve that yes, we can pay them the $21 a day instead of providing food for them and they would be responsible for their own food. Judy, would we just do that by resolution, I'm assuming, or how would we, for state board accounts? Uh, first know? I've heard of it, don't really know for sure. <clears throat> I mean, I have a problem with it, as long as whatever we need to do to make it. Uh, it's, I mean, first uh, thought, it does sound like a resolution. That's what I would think, first thought, but I, mm -hmm. we, and I don't think it would be a problem. I know I don't have a problem with no, it. I, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I do want to stress that we will just add this to their final pay. We right. will not make individual checks. Right. Right. Yeah. No, this goes with just their, they get election pay, training pay. So if someone didn't show up that day, right. they will not get no. paid. Exactly. No. Okay, because. Uh, but they, it, it would get Delaware County out of the catering business. And I, not, it's, it's, I agree. It's this become a, really a problem. And so when you're trying to provide food for 500 people, it's just, a lot of the businesses can't do it now, and, and the, <coughs> since we have one of the lowest poll worker pays in the state. Yeah, I was wondering. You know, most of our poll workers make eighty dollars, and they work about fourteen hours on election day. We pay them a small extra for training, so it actually give them twenty-one more dollars, and they can provide if they want. If they want breakfast, they can provide right. their own or or whatever instead of the because there's no sense us providing it, then they don't eat part of it. It's just, and you're really just wasted money doing that. No, I agree. Would, would your office or be responsible for the signage for these at uh, on election day, that yeah. turning them to the other? Yeah, what they do is they have an oath form they fill out and then they put, we keep track of who attends training and we keep track of who works election day. Okay, I'm going back to the precincts. Oh, okay. The precincts that, that, that we might <coughs> I would assume we would combine uh -huh. those those previous precincts. Would there be signage there directing uh -huh. them yeah. on election? That's what we did in the special yeah. election. Yeah. We went to the precincts where they did vote for the school referendum last year and actually posted signs that said where their precinct is now located. We also ran that in a legal ad, I think, four times. And I think the commissioner's secretary did. Then you run that like three times, Patty, also a legal ad. We, run, we uh, advertised it twice. Okay, so we, we actually we put it on the county website um, last year for the referendum. We had it on the school website. We tried. We went to their town hall meeting and passed out a list telling them where their new precincts were. And we tried to, you know, to go above to make sure people knew where their voting sites were. Like I said, this here is a recommendation list for, for the commissioners to look at. And, and it's like precinct 26. This last year, Precinct 26, is there's no parking at the Pittenger Center. You have to use their caterer to, you know, for that that day. They wanted the poll workers to buy $5 passes so they could, I mean, it just really, that precinct needs to be moved. Right. And so you're basically moving it a couple blocks from there where you have more access and more parking and you don't have to deal with that because you have, 30,000 people at Ball State during a school day. So it just, it makes it a lot simpler. So that's a common sense move, Yeah. you know? And so, um, but like I said, we went through, we looked at numbers, we looked at locations. Another one is like Hamilton Township Fire Department and the Dale Com School Court. Mm -hmm. They sit on the same parking lot. They've got precinct separate boards, mm -hmm. you know, so you're, spending about a thousand dollars a board you could reduce that by just putting them both in the hamilton township fire department you know so some of them are just common sense moves right. too they're right across the street from each other and things and it would really it would save the county a lot of money if we could actually reduce the boards well, i definitely support this uh, anything we do to save money on elections i'm assuming we could make a an informal motion i would assume and then have the addresses and all when we adopt the regular list yeah. You know, I was just thinking that uh, we need to probably go back and see how the uh, pay was established, you know, resolution or uh, ordinance, and then go from that and just adjust that. 
moved in. I would think it's going to be by some sort of resolution. Yeah. But I'll go ahead and make a, a resolution or a motion that, to accept the, uh, the recommendation to combine the precincts as, as uh, presented. I'll second that. Yeah. Have a motion on second. Any discussion? Just further, further no. I mean, we will adopt the precincts by address okay. and everything here yeah. for too long anyway. So this, the addresses and the, the names of those will be there. Will you get me a list of of the changes that yes. you, so we can make sure that we contact them, yes. and then we'll get we'll have to do new contracts okay. uh, to all of them since they are combining them. I just that uh, I wish we could have eliminated more school, but we know that's not going to happen. But well, some of the, some of the schools, if you look down through that list, like Yorktown Middle School, we we were trying to reduce it to one board. I know. So that puts it down to one area for them to secure instead of two areas <clears> in the school. <throat> Anthony Administration Building the same way, you know. So we're slowly trying to move, but yeah. the the public buildings we have to use some of the public buildings. You know, one is by statute, but it's really accessible. They have Wi-Fi. They have things that we need. You know, we don't have to pay for them also. Yeah. So it's just we there's a lot of things that that we use, and so we're trying to. Uh, one of the schools we eliminated was Mitchell School. Good. You know, so we're slowly moving away. You know, and it's helping their security and things right. also. But there's just some that we can't write. I understand, so. but I appreciate you working on this, Steve. Thank you. Please, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Riggan? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cook, are you going to present the uh, prosecutor's ordinances or work? <laughs> no, I just came down to tell you that everyone's in the court this morning. We have four trials, including a murder trial yeah, this morning. Yeah, Jerry, please, please oh, stand. Okay. Uh, Patty called me and I'm trying to get someone over here. I'm trying to get hold of Eric to see if he can come out of his trial momentarily to come over. We had four trials this morning, including a murder trial, and everyone is, is out of the office in court. So uh, but just quick as I can get someone over here, I will, and I apologize for that we don't have someone here sooner. Sean, have you seen any? I don't think so. I, I have. If I worked on it, it would have been months ago. It's nothing recently. Okay, because Rhonda brought them to me. And Eric knows why yeah. they've asked for it. I, I'm out of the loop and I is don't it, know why. Is it time sensitive? Well, that's what I yeah. didn't know about the federal equitable sharing program. If that was something that they had with the funds, mm -hmm. if that was something that was yeah. that needed to be done immediately, I would assume the second one wouldn't be. But Rhonda's out of the office today? She's out of the office this morning. She'll be in. Probably around 10:30. She had a doctor's appointment well, this morning. We only got a couple more things left That's on our agenda. I, I'm waiting on Eric to. I just sent him a text message trying to get him over here right away. So I'll get someone here just as quick as I can. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Jason. I've got a monthly report uh, for you, and, and just for Denise's sake, I'm going to give you a copy of this so you can. Thank you. You don't have to try to keep up with the numbers. You're welcome. Uh, <clears throat> we've completed our first month with the uh, new building company, Medville out of Minneapolis, and uh, very pleased with uh, what they have done. Um, we have, for July, deposited $226,243.47. Um, with that, one of the things that we have done in the past, and it is by uh, the EMS ordinance, uh, is <clears throat> just to clean up the books, we need to, in a public meeting, go over the write-offs. And uh, let me quickly explain how this works. Uh, if you want to take part in the federal Medicaid, Medicare program, or you want to participate with, say, Blue Cross as an insurance company, and they guarantee your payment, then what we will do is say, okay, uh, we want to participate in the Medicare program, <clears throat> So, and I'm just gonna use round numbers uh, here as an example. Let's say an ambulance bill is $100, and they guarantee th uh, $30 for that. That, allow that means that we have to write off $70. It will not allow us to go after the consumer or, or the um, 
person that actually has the, the insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, whatever that is. And those are general numbers. I'm not, those are not accurate. That's just uh, as an example. So for us to guarantee that money to come back in, we have to participate in those programs. Same with all hospitals, doctor's offices, and everything else. So we could charge $5,000 and we're still going to get rough percent. So we're going to have to write off those amounts. So even though these amounts seem high, uh, I wanted that explanation to be out there. There's no way for us to collect this money because we do participate with those. Because we participate with Medicaid, Medicare, uh, and several insurance companies. As an example, if you have a private insurance company and we take their consignment, then instead of them sending the subscriber the check, they will send the check directly to our billing company. <coughs> so rather than, and it kind of cuts out the middleman, so if I myself have an ambulance call <clears throat> and I, my bill is $1,000, my insurance is gonna pay 80% uh, of that, I've gotta make up the copay, but they're going to mail me that 80% check, and then I have to turn around and mail it to our uh, billing company because it's under my name. This cuts that out. This goes directly to our billing company. It will uh, speed up those payments for one. It guarantees those payments for the other, uh, and it also, in sometimes you've got uh, individuals who are in you know money crisis and. And they'll say, well, do I send this off to where it's supposed to go or do I spend it? Because it is made out to them. That's a contract between them and their insurance companies. So as we take these write-offs, uh, it's guaranteeing money for us. It may have been un completely uncollectible at all, or it could be that we're getting a larger percentage because we are writing these, these monies off. So for July, our write-offs were $101,032.44. Uh, in your monthly report recap sheet, it shows you where they are. Medicaid, commercial insurance, Medicare, uh, any build and error, uh, any deceased, uh, and any uh, write-offs for client request. Why would we do that as a good example? If you have county insurance, uh, it's self-pay, so the county's paying that bill. Why would we bill ourselves for one of our employees? That's not necessary. So as they come through, if they don't tell us or we don't know that they're a county employee, then we go through the um, same process with our charting and it's going to generate a bill. Then they bring that back to us and we'll say, oh, well, you're not supposed to get billed anyway. We notify the billing company and that is, a, that is indeed another write-off. So those are just some examples uh, of what we have done. We've billed out uh, $394,034.96, so that's our balance forward. Uh, and just so you know, um, we put uh, back into um, general fund and our other uh, EMS supporting funds $268,459.59. So I would just ask that um, you take the uh, write-off so we can clear that off the book. We'll continue forward with our balance forward uh, accounts and uh, then I will move those into the collections data. And then by or by ordinance, uh, after I want to say, I think it's 150 days, we'll look at those for possible collection. If, if there is a possibility to go get that money at all, then we'll re review those um, after that time period. It, it could be that someone has, uh, is now deceased after we've taken them to the hospital and that would be a necessary write-off. Uh, what is it? What, what is not that many percentage of their copay is going to get collected? So there are just different kind of reasons why that takes place, and, and that's a very short, down and dirty explanation of, of what those mean. So um, I would ask that you uh, write the hundred one thousand thirty-two dollars and forty-four cents uh, off in today's minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the write-off of the set Second. A motion and a second. Discussion. Denise, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Riggan? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Um, just to let you know, I'm still working with the ARS who is finishing uh, accounts for us. Uh, and, and we've not done write offs with them for some time. So we will have, at some point, I'll have an ending number for them. Still working on that because they uh, are still doing some billing for us as uh, some of us, those collections are still com coming in. That is a normal process. Um, my understanding after speaking with our office manager that we are still collecting some monies from uh, two and three billing companies ago. So it's not something that's 
uh, you know, that we're talking small amounts, you know, $5 sometimes here, $10 there, but uh, th that's not un uh, uncommon for that to take place. I do want to tell you about the uh, emergency management uh, agency as well. Uh, we just went through our annual grading process and uh, this coming Friday at the Indiana Emergency Response uh, Commission, they will uh, hand out those top uh, district awards again for this year. And uh, I can't imagine that we won't be at least number one, number two, number three in our uh, grading process. Uh, I believe it's uh, 350 points and it's a sliding scale uh, and we scored somewhere around 332. So it's uh, uh, another uh, win for us, another A plus, if you will, for emergency management. We continue our processes and uh, partnerships uh, throughout the city and the county. Thank you. We'll move the payment of claims in the amount of one million five hundred sixty-seven thousand sixty-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. So move. Second. Have a motion and a second for the payment of claims. Any discussion? Please call the roll, please. Ms. Riggin? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. Yep, we'll take uh, comments from from the public or I think Chris might have some good news for us on the job well done. Would you like to st step to the podium? About what, Sherry? <laughs> you talking about the you know what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. I'd like to congratulate Chris and the highway for doing a nice job on our first uh, back to gravel road at 900 North. Yeah, so we, uh, we drive a line hundred north. We uh, probably put, uh, it's probably 20 or 21 tons on it. It's probably 8 to 12 inches deep. Uh, we're going to let the uh, weather have it for right now and the traffic, you know. And this fall, we intend to go back with it and put a cap on with number 10 half stone. Right now, that's good. I mean, cooling up now. So we'll see. We, we did it in house, and the guy said, Follow through, and I appreciate it. Well, the only problem with that <laughs> running 73 stones through that paper, it's hard on our equipment. Hard. Did they put the diesel? I think Jonathan said you had to put some kind of diesel oil or something in yeah, it. Yeah, we put the tack on it. Every so you might want to look at it then. Oh, tell, we, telling him that maybe yeah. you don't want to do it anymore. Uh, as far as today, when uh, we intend to finish uh, 1070 north, we go right straight to 950 north. Uh, then we'll change our paper over a cheap pass road and we'll start a portion of wheeling up through there. That's our plan for this week. We have three mowers going and uh, three patch trucks and uh, one brush truck today. So that's what's happening. Right. Thanks, Thank Chris. You, Chris. Thanks, Chris. <coughs> well, well, since uh, Sean's not seen these ordinances, I would. Uh, <coughs> typically, what, what we do is, is we try to run everything. Uh, through the commissioners and our secretary and we send it to Sean and Steve and that way we verify that these things have been looked at or where they originated from uh, if we didn't we didn't see these so uh, just want to table, we'll just, uh, table these ordinances so I'll make a recommendation that we ordinance we table ordinance 2014-014 and 015. Second. A motion is second to table ordinances 014 and 015. Discussion? Denise, can you call the roll? Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Riggin? Yes. And Mr. King? Yes. And our next regular meeting of the commissioners, it'll be on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. It'll be Tuesday, September 2nd, 2014 at 9 a.m. Happy Labor Day. Yeah. Uh, have anything else? I have a motion for recess. So moved. Second. Have a motion and second for recess. Denise, can you call the roll? Mr. Bledsoe, yes. Ms. Riggin, yes. and Mr. King. Yes. Okay.